This is a major construction site in the west of England. Working on this multi-million pound project is section manager Alistair McCarthy. It's a job that requires a good understanding of life skills, numeracy, literacy and ICT. We'll spend the day with Alistair on the site and find out how he puts these life skills into action. Later you'll have the opportunity to go online and develop these skills for yourself. Look out for the web address coming up. Alistair's working day starts at 7am and every day is different. Um, just taking five minutes out to check through my emails. Um, I'm going to go into the morning meeting in uh, five minutes. That'll uh, tell me what sort of day I'm expecting, whether it's going to be busy um, and frantic. Hopefully it won't be. The day will typically throw up um, its, its own problems as every day does on site. Troubleshooting will take up a, a huge proportion of my day. Um, snagging, we're also at the stage of the job where we're nearly ready to hand over in the coming weeks. Heading down towards the sports facility, which is the building I look after with my colleague Tony. Um, as I said earlier, we're going to meet Tony and then discuss what's going to happen for the day, um, who's doing what and who's working where. The cost of the sports facility is about five and a half million pounds. It's treated as a separate project to the rest of the, the, the development. It started about 18 months ago and is due for completion in about four weeks' time. Morning, Alf, all right? Morning. Your main task today, this, and the air infiltration uh, preparation works. Fire stopping, Okay. Et I've yeah. got a lot of time to spend up in the residences this morning. Yeah, okay, turn off, okay. catch you about lunchtime right. now. Right, okay, cheers. I've been with the company for 10 years. Um, I left school at the age of 17 with uh, five GCSEs. Um, I went to a careers fair and came across Carillion, who then sponsored me through university for one day a week while, while working on, on projects. I've progressed from an engineer stroke technician up to section manager uh, within 10 years. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go and have a feel of it. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy it and paint you. Spot on. Right. Thanks, Ken. Okay, mate. Cheers. I've described my role as a section manager as um, being almost hands-on in the field with the chaps, making sure what they're doing is correct, conforms to specifications and drawings. Um, problem solving, troubleshooting, answering the phone, um, trying to coordinate different trades and subcontractors, uh, liaising with the architects to resolve problems on site, as the architects generally aren't based on site. Yeah, go ahead, Mikey. Any uh, problems I may encounter out on site, um, technical information or guidance that I require, I can quite easily come into the office and search our online web-based library for data and information. I've been requested by the painter to um, provide a specification for the paint that covers the floor in the plant room. Um, of course I'm not going to know this off the top of my head, the architect specified it and the information again is all web-based so I'm now searching through the internet to try and find this information. Right, found what I want uh, from the web-based library. I shall now print that off, take a copy to the painter. You can order the paint. Paint gets delivered, we can carry on with the job. Uh, got the spec, I shall now deliver this to the painter. Hi, Leon. Oh, yeah, got the you paint spec there for the sports hall floors. All oh, right. Um, when do you want that by? Um, soon as possible, please, mate. There's three of us spare, so we'll drop on it Monday morning, if not Monday afternoon at the very latest. Great. Foreman, gosh, he wants everything. There's a surprise. <laughs> Alistair's responsible for health and safety. He has to tour the site regularly, keeping an eye open for potential hazards. So this room outside the building is the electrical intake room. Um, there's live electrics running into here, it's the main supply for the building, um, hence the danger of working in there. We call it a restricted area, access by permit only. Um, anyone working in this room has got to have authorisation from Carillion to be in there and we've got to ensure that they're working safely and to within their method statement. And we've actually got a chap working in here now patching up some plasterboard. Afternoon Dean. 
Yeah. Nearly finished? Yeah, yeah. finished. Yeah. You, um, you've, you've got the right permit to work in here, have you? Yeah. Sure. Excellent. Thanks, Thanks mate. Thank yeah. Yeah. Everything of what I've got to go through, and, you know, yeah, and you know what you're doing, yeah? Yeah, within your, yeah, within your yeah, method statement. This, this document, as I referred to earlier, is the permit to access. We can see it's all correct and in order. We therefore know Dean's working safely, and, and more importantly, where he is. Okay, that's great, Dean. Thanks, mate. What we've got here, we're, in, we're actually stood in courtyard four at the minute. Um, there's four courtyards and a sports facility, courtyard one to four. Um, this is probably the least developed at the minute at this, this stage of the project. Uh, within the courtyard, you've got two blocks, one on either side of the courtyard. Um, there's a total of 1,932 bedrooms uh, throughout the job, um, this just being one quarter of them. Um, you can see the machines working away down there. They're, they're grading the courtyard, ready for landscaping and finishing. walking up the R block road to the top end of the site um, you'll see the finishes going on top of the road it's not traditional um, tarmac it's block paving um, the chaps put the sand down level the sand out and lay the block paviors on top of the sand they then run over the block paviors with a compacting machine a whacker plate and brush sand into the joints and the, the block paviors literally hold themselves up against one another and that's the structural top top finish to the road this road would be finished in approximately uh, a week to a week and a half with three to four men working on it, seven till seven, five days a week. We lay 5,000 a day. Uh, we're now going to go up to courtyard one, which is uh, the, the, the furthest on in the job. You see all the landscape and you see the comparison between courtyard one and four, the, the mo most finished and the least complete. Paul, um, I've just had a crack with Damien. He says you've got the key to Courtyard 1 gates. Any chance uh, we can get it open, please, mate? This is Courtyard 1, um, a very near to completed courtyard, just doing the last bits of landscaping and planting. Um, you've got three blocks on this side and four blocks behind me. In the middle, we've got a um, cycle store and bin store for the students to keep their bikes and encourage them to use bikes. Um, the rubbish should all be, all be collected and uh, stored in one central area. We're just doing some snagging works that have been picked up by the clerk of works. Um, these chaps are just relaying some paving that's been damaged. Within the next couple of hours, they'll have finished what they're doing and, and, and the, the job of the courtyard will be complete. While walking around this morning, um, I came across an operative using a pneumatic breaker. Um, I challenged him, when challenged, he was unaware of the exposure time or usage time for that piece of equipment. Um, I've advised him to stop. I'm now going to check through the blue book and check the exposure time for that particular piece of equipment and, and, and advise him on whether he's using it collect correctly or not. Um, this is a copy of the HSE Blue Book um, guidance on health and safety for construction sites. It consists of two folders and is constantly updated to reflect the changes in the health and safety legislation. Alistair relies upon large amounts of documentation to support him in his role. The ability to identify and process key facts is crucial. I've now found what I'm looking for, the exposure time, or the recommended exposure time limit for the piece of equipment the chap on site's been using. I shall now take this information out onto site and uh, advise him on the correct use of that piece of equipment. To use it safely, you need to be wearing the right gloves and... Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. I think the highlight for me in my job is being able to get out, out and about on a, on a nice day, the sun's shining, I'm not stuck in the office, I'm not tied to a desk for seven, eight hours a day. It's a combination of being in and out of the office, especially when the weather's nice. You do find uh, an excuse to be out more than you do in. 
The negatives for me are pretty much the opposite. I'm on a cold, dark morning. Um, the last thing I want to be doing is getting out of bed to go onto site and have to resolve issues in the rain and the cold and try and put the labour to work. I think, though, the, 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 the pluses for me far outweigh the, the, the cons, and, and all in all, it's a, it's, a, it's a great job to have. One of my roles as a section manager is to liaise directly with the architect on pretty much a daily basis to resolve any problems and issues that may arise. Are there any elements affected? Uh, I think we're going to have a problem with the lighting. The trunk in for the lighting runs across this, this sort of direction um, and steps up and over the basketball support. So I think we're going to have to step the trunk in out. If that is the problem, it looks like being the problem, that needs to be flipped around, um, i.e. get the, the dimensions on the, on the correct side of the grid line. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, excellent. Hello, Alistair speaking. Oh, hi, Emily. It's purely just to get the, um, the OK from the Clark Works to get the squash court signed off. Yeah, brilliant. Excellent. OK, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, Emily. Um, another of my tasks I need to perform um, today is to take some survey equipment and to go out onto site with my colleague to um, calculate and record levels, as built levels of curbs and curb edgings. Uh, what we're actually going to do now is use this tool here, a um, piece of survey equipment, to record and measure the height of the curbs that have been laid on the road. You see my colleague in the distance um, holding what is effectively um, a giant ruler. Um, I can look through this, take a reading onto the ruler and in turn we can calculate the heights of the curbs, um, record this data and, and tra transpose it onto a, onto a drawing for, for archive. The objective of what we're doing now is to uh, perform what we call an as-built survey. Um, it's quite important to record the information of built items on site so that we can double check that it's as per a specified drawing and specification. Okay, Mark. Great, we've got the information we need. I'll now record that on a drawing, forward it to the architect, and uh, it'll be stored away for archive. My college education proved very useful. Um, as I stated earlier, working one day a week in university and the rest of the time on site taught me a great deal. Academically, it really, really helped me but from a practical hands-on point of view, it was, uh, it was first class for me. Good night, Arlene, see you in the morning. Yeah, see you. Good night. It's a vibrant, outgoing um, job. It's, it's very hands-on, you meet different people all day, every day of the week. Um, there's always a new challenge, and the, the job satisfaction is immense um, when you've built something, um, a, a large bridge, a building, a power station to stand back, in five, ten years' time, and think I've actually built that. I was involved in the construction of it. Is is really means something. After a long and demanding day, it's finally time to head home. Good night. <laughs>